best B1 picks in, in the meta. Ash has seemed like she's been the pick that the teams have preferred in really any trade in, in any semblance of bot lane. I guess the one thing being if Zeri Yumi is open, maybe, maybe you go for one of those. But with the fact that teams have more regularly been willing to trade, whether it's the Heimerdinger or go for things like Varus, Ash, uh, Caitlyn, like like these these other AD marksmen and support picks as well, that it's not something you need to go to, which is what TT do realize here. So if they want to try to answer this, they could go with the Jin Heimerdinger lane themselves and have Huan Fong and Yao Yao play around that. Uh, we, we highlighted Lushinami. It seems like once again, that is just going to go through. So probably will just get that, that Jin Heimerdinger lane coming on out, but no, Ooh. they're gonna save support considering that we just hit on, right? There are more options in the support role now and wanting to get their hands on the Cassante before the top lane pool gets pinched once again, because I can imagine that Scion would not make it to second rotation of picks. No, definitely not. And I, also, oh yeah, his most played is Cassante so far this split, definitely very comfortable on the champion. As uh, Chal about, gonna go with the Sejuani, not too surprising there. And now the bands are gonna get interesting, right? Because I was about to say, Heimerdinger has been what uh, a lot of teams will pick alongside that Jin. I'm curious if we get more support bands coming on through here, or if they now focus on the solo lanes. We need to remember that uh, that Jin can also be flexed into that support role. Uh, I don't really know what they could go alongside with it. We've seen Huan Fong play a little bit of everything. And I feel like as the split has gone on, it's been less about like the set bot lane pairings that you think of. And you'll see a lot of times like just a marksman support be paired with pretty much any AD carry. Huan Fong's also been one of our predominant players of the Ziggs. <laughs> so that's something you always have to remember that's when Huan Fong is on the rift. It's actually, I guess, not as most played anymore after that first game, uh, but just sitting right under it with, with three picks. Yeah. And also... Huang Fong, known for the Jin. Like, when yeah. you think back to Worlds 2020, he did the Huang Fong, where he curtain called from the enemy base. I love it. The Zix man. Yeah, he respect. It. So, so they are acknowledging the fact that that can go down to the support role, because when you think about what supports are left open that you typically see in Ash that aren't Marksman, it's like sometimes we've seen things like the Karma come out, but Karma Jin, not really a lane you think too much of. Like, you have the Enchanter there, but it doesn't feel like you're really buffing something up for, like, huge late-game prowess as compared to just the ability to run them down early on. I will say, Yao Yao has played more Jin than Huang Fong has this split. Yeah. Yao Yao has played it three times. There's a very reasonable chance that we do see that alongside a different AD carry for Huang Fong, but what he would end up playing at that point, we'll have to wait and see. I will say, historically, big Ezreal player. Not this split, but it's possible. It's possible. As a Yone is locked in for the side of NIP. Now that's the kind of style we're likely to see. And if there's anyone who, who should know how to match up against that Yone, it should be Yukal, sitting on three picks of it so far. Uh, even having the Maokai so they could set up four AD coming out. So that's Tristana. We gotta, you know, keep in mind that it could be mid as it looks like that will be the play. Put Tristana in the mid lane, play around that, try to bully out with the range advantage you have early on. And then you at least have things like the rocket trip to try to, to avoid out on, on any of the all ins. And especially once that level six comes in, it will be really hard for Dream to find it. If they do decide to go the route of this Nautilus, will make the bot lane matchup a little bit annoying. NIP will have full control. But if Beichuan, and especially Yukao, can, can like take over that mid jungle, you can put a lot of resources into that bot lane. It's still one of the areas of sure, tank supports don't win out in that matchup, but they still do much better in like these early skirmishes, it, especially if you can blow like summoners off of like an Ash and of Aris. Yeah, worth quickly mentioning as well, NIP, very little AP on this team. Obviously Yone has a bit in his kit naturally, like half of that damage is gonna go to AP, but even still with the Renekton coming out in the top side, double AD carry on the bottom side, Yes, you've got your kind of hybrid damage coming out from both uh, Varus and Yone, but it doesn't feel like quite enough AP damage. But then, I guess it's kind of similar on TT. It's only really the Maokai that'll be bringing that magic damage. I gotta be honest, I've seen so many games though where Maokai is stopping the, the, the damage That's chart true, that, you yeah. know, I think it is a pretty solid source. And it's really only relevant if Hoya becomes huge, because if Trikal should be dominating this lane. And it's what you want, right? We've seen Tristana just single-handedly take over games so far. If you can find an advantage, you can shut Dream out. You are now leaning bot side with your Maokai. You're just taking plates so fast in that mid lane matchup. You're enabling skirmishes elsewhere. You're making it hard for NIP to utilize the prio they should have in these other matchups. And then you're leaving Hoya to his own devices to be fine up in that top lane. So that's what we're looking out for for the side of TT. NIP, on the other hand, you have this bot lane matchup that you already know should be able to generate prio. It's going to be about them being able to dodge out on those dredge lines if 
TT's botlane can find any semblance of pressure. So I'm looking at I'm looking at your soul lanes, right? Being able to shut down that Tristana, especially once we hit like the level three mark, and Yone has his his full kit available yeah. to look for those all ins, and then setting Invincible up for success again, one, maybe early, because once we get towards like first item, I really feel like taking that Cassante with only two members can be a, a bit of a chore. Oh, we've seen that Hoya more than capable of piloting an Invincible tank in the top side. Uh, so keeping our eyes on Shaolong Bao in this early game, what he's able to accomplish on the Sichuan. He has at least those, like say, melee sono laners, can be really valuable alongside a Sichuan. He's Yukal, not even worried about CSing right now. He's just worried about making sure Dream has a terrible time in this mid lane. Even getting the bone plating out so early on so he can get even more out of these early trades, zoning him off the way. But with the fact that he did so that he right, it is just going to go in quickly and should give Dream the avenue to be able to pick up some of the CS. But a lot of these types of matchups is for Dream, like trading your HP to make sure that you can get uh, those minions. And then whether it's things like T uh, TP or Shaolong Bao hovering around, around mid lane to make sure you get your resets, those are going to be incredibly important for him to get through this lane unscathed. Yeah, like you say, trading your HP, but also doing it intelligently so you don't just get bullied so hard that you can't play the game. Beach one level three moving towards his bottom side, but voted to draw to have a ward will be cleared away by Beach one. As Shaolin Power moving towards his bottom side, this is kind of what we saw towards the start of the previous game, just the opposite way around, right? Where Beach one now trying to pressure on towards his bottom side blue buff. Beach one at least giving his bot lane the safety and security, right? Now having that that vision in bot lane river, also the sapling there to spot out any potential ganks that can come out from the side of NIP and make sure their bot lane doesn't get punished even more so than they already should. So I like that coming out from them, and it looks like Shaolin Bao is going to look for this. But again, Ward. Yep, Zombie Ward is there in the brush. Nobody clearing that one away, and it means that uh, Shaolin Bao will be spotted. I think that Ward was spotted as well, so TT should have full information that there is a Ward there in the tri brush coming out from Shaolin Bao. But again, all TT really need to do in this early stage is make sure that Shaolin Bao can't be snowballing. Look at that mid lane CS already starting to build up. We knew this matchup was going to be hard. Like, NIP blind to pick the Yone. But with the early... Okay, so is it actually going to go for the early reset? I was going to say, the second he recalls, comes back to lane with some components, it's going to be pulling that matchup out even harder. And that really is where a lot of the TT offensive is built around. That pressure you're able to snack up in the mid lane. We're now at a point where Dream is level 4, so maybe we start seeing pressure put towards mid from Shaolong Bao. But right here, Tristana, you do still have some some tools to protect and keep yourself safe, like that rocket jump. Yep, still has flash available as well. Rocket jump available. Dream, not gonna find his window. Shaolin Bao wanted to make it happen, but it, it just isn't gonna. Also really good by Yukal to move up instead of moving towards his turret, because that could have set him up for the gank coming through. As we see the punishment bot lane, this is what we'd expect, right? Again, double marks when you're playing up against that Nautilus, and this is how you need this lane to go. You need to chunk them out so they're never healthy enough to be able to look for those all-ins. Yeah, that's the thing. If Nautilus has health to work with, and you're an Ash, like, that Akalans, you're gone. So making sure that they keep them low on HP. Once again, Shaolin Bao trying to find that way into the mid lane. So you count playing it intelligently. Well, you're an Invincible going at it in the top side as well. Nothing too much going to come of that lane. A very quiet early game. And we're essentially in this early game. We're trading a lead in the in the mid lane for a lead in the bottom. It's going to be about which team is able to, to more appropriately play around that. If NIP can start taking turret play, plating, break that turret very early on, and, and move this utility, this like siege force around the map, it's going to be monumental. And this could even open, open them up for things like Herald, right? Having that bot lane pressure and being able to move their bot lane over first. But you know for Yaya being on this Nautilus, it is about unlocking yourself from lane and enabling the rest of your team more so than it is about playing out through that 2v2. But with the 2v2, NIP should always have the option to have an early look towards Drake. Yeah. It looks like Shaolong Bao might even be there right now. I love this from uh, Photo Control there. They realized that Bogbong was going to try and recall. So they just shoved the wave as fast as possible, knowing that they don't have to physically cancel the recall. If Bogbong goes back, he's just going to miss a wave. For some stay in lane, as Dream could be in trouble here. Yukal, level 6, lethal tempo. Brock jumps forward with the ulti, but the bone plating comes off cooldown mid-fight and saves the day. That is so tragic. Still getting a huge chunk onto him. He doesn't have TP, so Yukal will be able to get this wave in and, and 
once again extend the CS lead even more. But would have felt great to have that kill. Love that he recognized the window of I'm already level six. This is my chance to really break this game open. Oh yeah, actually proxy farming there for a second behind the tower. I don't know if you felt like you could dive invincible. That feels perhaps a little over aggressive, but just trying to put some pressure on. He's trading back and forth, getting those grasp stacks as much as he can. And it feels like this has been quite a tense early game, despite not a lot happening dramatically. It, it does feel like both teams really respecting what the other can bring. Aside from maybe Yukal, who's going all in. <laughs> and this is where he's going to actually have to start respecting the opposing side, right? Now not having Flash, and for a small period of time not having that ulti, Dream will have his. Dream will be able to try to find those all-ins uh, potential, but... I mean, with the, the item disparity, that could still be a bit rough. Pickaxe, two long swords on the opposing side, only two daggers. Yukal, I mean, his auto is going to be doing a lot of meaningful damage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the all-in is terrifying, and Dream has no flash now. This is the thing about Yone. People talk a lot about the fact that you can jump in and get out without recourse, but if you are caught out in the first place, you have no way out without your ultimate managing to land, but your ultimate also blockable if someone jumps in the way and stop you escaping. So Dream does need to be cautious in that mid lane, not to be caught out of position, not to give Yukal the chance to, to find that all in. Shine Bow level six. That's why we see him hovering around mid, was hoping to turn this into a scuttle cram, but even now opportunities presenting themselves for NIP to find the engage that they want. Uh, it feels like Glacial Prison should always be like a surefire, at least summoner spell coming out on the opposite side. We have seen a lot of LPL junglers uh, flop those quite a bit, but hopefully Shaolin Pao doesn't do that here. Definitely not. Definitely not. Yao Yao's found him in the jungle, though. His mage run going to get the roots across the whole world right here. Shaolin Pao forced to flash, but here comes Yukal looking for resets. The bomb's going to go off on all three players, and here come the rest of the jumps. Joel takes a fourth shot, but Votic, the target of Yukal, forced to flash. But another great start for TT. Yukal using that ult to push Votic towards the wall, hopefully by a bit of time for the rest of TT to get there. Doesn't surmount into another kill, but does equate into another flash having to come through. And this is what we were hitting on early on in the game, right? Is that for TT's bot lane, it's a lot more about these, the scraps, the skirmishes coming through. If Yukal has cryo, he can move first. He can more easily enable those fights. A great read by Beichuan to be there at the same time to make sure Shaolin Val can't find that game. Invincible using his ult in the top side as well, but can't really find the pressure he needs. But it's enough to force Hoya under the tower and open up this Herald. Dream was still in that mid lane, shoving that wave. So he has priority mid, Invincible gets priority top. Shaolin Bao starts to Herald off. But Beichuan is here. Yukal waiting just over the wall for a chance onto Invincible, who doesn't have Dominus available. 2k on the Herald as Hoya on the top side of the fight. Here comes Yao Yao to start the engage. Knockups are there. Dream is already down. The Shalar Bao forced away. Looking for the knockup here from Hoya. If he can find it, goes wide. The slow is there, though. And Yao Yao over the wall waiting for Hex Flash potentially. And it's a kill for you, Cal. I was a bit afraid for TT because a lot of their key ultimates in that fight weren't up. Dream still had his, but great job soloing him out. It's gonna turn into Herald. And this game feels even more neutral, even more on pace towards a TT victory than game one. Yeah, I mean, almost 3,000. I guess it's closer to two and a half. At 10 minutes here for TT. And you, Cal, having a, a game and a half right here on the Tristan. 2-0 and 1. Once again, Shallow Bow just caught out away from the team. The team not really on the same page. I mean, honestly not reading the fact that, that Beitron would be here, would be close towards the spot center of the play, thinking at the time to hit on having that prior in mid lane allows Yukal to be able to join up. But here is what I found even more impressive because I thought Dream would be able to solo out the key carries like Yukal, but goes towards Hoya. Hoya able to pop the ultimate straight into the dredge line, straight to Yaya's ulti. Just great use of CC to make sure that the Yone had no time to do anything. It just leaves Dream in a position where after having used his flash, they're able to run him down. <laughs> I love watching Yao Yao at the end of that play. He's just stood in the back of Herald bit like, well, I can't do anything, but just, is XP range a thing for champions? <laughs> I'll just stand as close as I can to the fight uh, and just, just pretend I'm involved. And we're at a point now where TT are starting to complete some items. Frostfire Gauntlet now picked up Hoya, getting to that point where he will be such a nuisance to take down. 
Baytron being that only AP damage, Demonic Embrace coming through, so the Sapling's gonna be hitting even harder. And I, I have to imagine that Yukal might even be just ready, like, ready to base and pick up his Mythic quite soon, so... Yeah, it's, it's looking rough when NIP, I mean, looking at Dream especially, is still pretty far away from being able to get a full item completed. Harold now dropped in mid lane, just doubling down on the lead and advantage that Yukal has found even more. Yeah, that's two plates going down there. Here we go, all in from the side of NIP. Baytron the target, but knocked back in Yao Yao, doing so much to buy space. Baytron dodging away from Dream's ultimate as Yukal starts to clean up in the fight. Dodges back out again as well. Yukal looking insane for the health bars alone. Dream has an opportunity as Yukal goes in for more. The resets are there. Is Yukal going to go for draw as well? Invincible's in the wings. Hoya is behind the team as Yukal has to back away. You cannot give Yukal a champion that has this much playmaking potential because, my God, it is beautiful to see how he's just weaving around these fights. Wouldn't be cool if it kept going as we get to see the uh, the big old bruiser smash down. Okay, brings him into the Dragon Pit, Invincible with the Dominus. Hoya is gonna win this though. Hoya's ultimate is just so intense. I was wrong, I was totally wrong. Invincible <laughs> just annihilates him. Oh, Hoya thought the same thing. Hoya thought he had it down. Coming back in, I don't know if that was that was a big Q uh, that was able to help and sustain get, get so far up. We're gonna replay that because I was in the same boat as you. It looked like Invincible's yeah. days were numbered, but manages to find uh, find that kill, and now going to try to turn it into another plate. Should be able I wonder to if he gets that. punished, because Yukal's coming over. Yeah, Beitron, no ultimate available here, but should be able to just get onto him. Has the inside track on the top side, so the Grasping Roots available here. Or well, Twisted Advance, sorry. His Invincible slowed down. The bomb is on his head. Yao Yao's even here. And, uh, well, the rest is history. And now they're going to keep Yukal topside. You still have a minute with those plates left up, so he's going to try and break those down. But here we see it. A bit of kind of inefficiency see, right? Both the Sejuani Ult National coming out at the exact same time. Beautiful dodge out by Beijuan. Yeah. And the fancy feet, uh, the, the dodging is what was really impressive, right? Yukal able to get that jump once again. Yeah. Come to this side of the fight. And then even with low health bars. Hang Oya? on. Oya's in trouble here. Four players underneath the tower, and they will find the kill, but. Ah, uh, Dream has to go back to his shadow and is taken down by Juan Fog. Now the Grasping Roots land, followed up by a deadly flourish. And here comes the curtain call. But actually, Yao Yao kind of alone, feeling like he had teammates because the curtain call. But now gets into the brush. Can he survive this one? The dredge line onto the tower does go down in the end for 2v2 at the bottom side. Juan Fong charging forward, dancing grenade. Doesn't quite find both. Beitron's here to close the gap. Votic the target with a ramble smash to finish off the enemy jungler. And all of this was without their strongest member. Yukal was up in top side, taking that turret. I believe he got three plates while all that was going down, took the turret outright. And they're still able to win the fight on the bottom half of the map. Even people like Fotik, you're committing so heavily for that kill on Yao Yao, but you're burning flash, you're burning heal to close that distance. It's yeah. setting you up in a place to where TT, of course, are going to be able to trade up. And now we're at a point, not even 15 minutes in, 6k gold lead on the side of TT. I guess a bit diminished now, considering, you know, we just had that, that bounty go over, but... Yeah, it doesn't feel like diminishing <laughs> it <laughs> off, though, does it? No. As, uh, I mean, look, at least they get a pick onto Hoya here, who obviously did not realize the whole enemy team was here, but that... Shadow coming out from Dream. That really was the beginning of his demise. Yeah, we see them going, they find it, but now started by all the members of PT. He instantly goes down and now left in a position to where, sure, you have now found one pick, but you are completely surrounded by the members of TT. Curtain Call comes out. Sure, Yao Yao thinking he you know, had more friends, but he's able to buy so much time. Goes into yeah. Brush, no vision for that split second. And as we saw, Botik burning the flash. You're not just surrounded by the enemy team. So being a four for two in favor, and I was gonna say look at the bottom left-hand side of our screen, because we actually saw TT setting up for a dive, but Dream smartly backing off. Ooh. Hoya will get stunned up here. The follow-up there from Fotik as well. Invincible gets another stun. Hoya desperately trying to survive. Oh, pulls Invincible across the map, and then dashes over the wall. Hoya actually gets out of there. That's insane. Manages to escape, allows for TT to put all this pressure on the opposite side. Don't only look at mid, look at bot, where Yukal is pushing in. Oh, curtain call. Whoa, Invincible should be able to body block this. Wampong needs to get out of there, but here it comes. 
stream from the backside. Wong Fong surviving. Huh, I was pretty sure he was dead there, but I guess not. And Aru comes back out as Baytron Bradfall smashes Invincible, just getting battered around in this fight. Cannot move. And the craziest part, again, this is all without your 5-0-2 Tristana. You cows just being this force, making money yeah. all around the map. He got the top through. tower with the plates, then he went and got the mid lane tower, and now he's been in the bottom side during this fight. I mean, he, he is beyond rich. All of this, like, so after everything we've seen in this early game, there's only one inner turret left. And TT are now finally picking up the second Rift Herald. So uh, <laughs> I, I feel like they should be able to start breaking down the base very soon. And, you know, we're on track for TT to win this game. Like, it would it would take throws on throws on throws for an IP to come back. So I just want to say great bounce back from a loss against OMG. Again, a close, close games. But then the loss nonetheless, the last for them to have such a dominating performance as we see here. How much how does he do it? Uh, he pressed on. And then he pressed D. There you go. I don't want to <laughs> claim to be the superior analyst here, but uh, you there asked you the question. There you I go, the Cassante Mains. Tips for all your solo queue games. Yeah. Press R, press E. It's as simple as that, baby. Dragon going to be started off here by TT. And uh, I mean, it's like you say. The, that series against OMG, very close games, but definitely things to work on. Feels like today they are coming in with a very clear plan of how they want to play this one out. I will say, like, giving Yukal the opportunity to just have such a hard counter pick in that mid lane really didn't set NIP up for success. No, and again, this is Dream coming back in and not, not really able to show the best performances, but I guess TT as a whole. I mean, it really comes down to like, TT just look like a team that has been playing together for so long, that, that have, like, these laid out, like, thoughts and plans in the game, that, like, understand what they want to do, are working well together to where NIP, not only struggling in lanes, like the story of this game, but even looking at game one, where, where they're really just not able to bring things together cohesively as a unit, uh, definitely a lot of areas to improve in different ways, and it might, a lot of it might come down to people like PP God being gone. I always hit on that, like, in interviews, people have said that PB got a very vocal voice of pretty much every team that he's been on. Uh, and losing that, you're now looking at where, I guess, Draw coming in or Shaolin or someone else having to pick up those ranks. Yep. Gun Cole gonna be here, though, as Invincible. Caught out. Oh, the Gold Drinker, though, keeps him alive for the time being and might turn this play around. The tower finally goes down. Xiao Yao trying to escape with his life. Baytron dives into the backside to protect his support. Yukal finally arriving. This is a 3v5, a TT, I want it to go for it anyway. The bomb will finish Invincible. The reset is there for Yukal. He goes forward, Shadow Bow flashes onto him, but Yukal flashes back oh. out again, and the resets are there once more. Shadow Bow dodges the root, and somehow it's two for two. Still, TT finally get punished for fighting without their, their supreme carry, right? Yukal wasn't there, and I'd be able to, to take away some kills. And sure, TT did manage to get another turret, but at least NIP were able to find something. When, when you're this far behind, you're really going to take anything you can get. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you'll take the trade. Still losing the tower in the end. This core drinker right here completely changes the play. Like, I was so sure Invincible was done for. Yeah, core drinker keeps him healthy in the middle of all the members. As you see, Bon Fong not able to put off the most damage against him and feeling a little bit wary to walk forward when, when Yone is also grouped up. But the second Yukal comes in, Yao Yao hitting some great hooks. This gonna be able to bring Invincible down to let the reset come through. This was bold. Yeah. I thought he was gonna be he was gonna regret this decision, but Yao Yao still able to follow forward and make sure that they can convert those into more kills is great. But I will say, right, not only trading like evenly, even if you lose a tower, but with TT's lead, I mean you would think off of a Rift Herald push at this point, yeah. that TT should be like breaking in hips. So that's why my my definitely ending the game, one. honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like with how far ahead they were. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna take that. They are still massively ahead at the end of the day. They are, they do still have this tremendous lead. And Sharo gonna go on through, at least gave vision for a second there. Doesn't find the stun though. TP being channeled is NIP last chance saloon here. Invincible flashing on towards you, Cal, but won't be able to finish the kill. In the meantime, Yao Yao caught the top side of the fight. Invincible traded though, and Juo now found as you, Cal, trying to finish those kills, but the flash keeps him alive. And NIP, they're bouncing back in this game. NIP, they keep managing to find picks with their long range engage tools. 
and once again, UCAL not able to put off any DPS to make sure that TT can solidly win out in a fight. UCAL chasing them off. Baytron did survive, which means, honestly, with a Tristana, maybe they just go for the Baron again anyway. They really could just brute force this one. Shout out in the vicinity. TP's coming out from both sides. As we look to try and reset this fight, Shaolin Bao over the wall. Arrow comes through, stunning up Yao Yao. Dream into the pit, but dashes back out immediately. Shaolin Bao dives in to try and find the steal, but they'd stop the DPS. Uh, well, uh, they sort of stopped the DPS. That was so close, right? That steal was definitely possible from Shaolin Bao. Doesn't manage to get it. And now it's there, and they're going to keep running NIP down. They're just going to kill everyone, I'm pretty sure. This is 2v4 from Yukal and Hoya as they just look for so many kills. Invincible, the next one, as he jumps on forwards. Yukal shredding NIP to pieces. And Yukal looks to grab himself a quadra kill. What a victory lap from this squad. Huge from Yukal in that fight. They even have waves to just go for the game win. 22 minutes in. T I mean, TT didn't make this look easy. This was easy for TT. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. TT, domination here. Oh, and, wow. Uh, they're not actually going to win the game. They don't, they don't the, I guess death timers are quite low because it's yeah. 22 minutes. I That's still true. thought, I thought after what we just saw, TT would have the swagger to be like, ah, we don't care, boys. We're strong enough. Let's go for it. And, you know, you know what much now? They're gonna be even stronger. Look at these items coming out. Medjai's in jungle, rapid fire yeah. in mid. We're gonna see how this all goes down. TT not able to prevent uh, Sean Bell from coming into the pit and ends up spiting a little bit too early, which still leads to TT getting the Baron. And then with the teleport, with Yukal just wrapping around, they're able to start bringing these down. And Ino Tristana wants to start, again, getting, getting those uh, like explosive charges off. You're able to keep re rinse and repeating your rocket jump. NIP having nowhere left to run. Yeah. I mean, Yukal was seven levels up on Chuo there as he DPSs down the enemy at support. Like, that is something else. And even against Invincible, he had two level advantage. Invincible went in there, gets his combo off, realizes he's only done a fifth of Tristada's health, and uh, realizes his demise is imminent. Good little dodge on the arrow there from Yukal. As we could be looking at more multi-kills in the second here, Yukal DPSing away. Shaolin found the first target, but no. One each for the time being, TT. Looks like they'll just button this series up as Joel tries to get onto that fountain. It's Fotic next on the chopping block. Yukal completely invincible because the Bloodthirster just keeping him full HP. And speaking of invincible, he gets just about onto the fountain to keep himself alive. That's going to be game, set, match here for TT. Absolute domination on the rift. TT showing even if they face a road bump in their last series, they have not lost a step. What's most telling to me about this game is at the end there, you count four items. Uh, and Dream hadn't even finished his second. Wow. That just shows how much of a commanding lead he had, how much you count dominated. And I have, I have loved seeing Tristana's like resurgence back into the mid lane, especially in the hands of LPL mid laners, and just seeing all the crazy, exciting plays and how they're able to, to just take over 